Tag and Brag Nation and Rocky fam, welcome back to Food Clock Chronicles. So last week, you saw the clover. It's amazing how powerful that stuff can be, especially this time of year. But I think the most important thing about the clover is ease of planting it and the ease of maintenance. If you're just starting out and you're gonna plant anything, clover is the thing to plant. Now moving on to Food Plot Chronicles number three. Number three. Three, we are moving to what we call our front field. Now our front field is our oldest standing food plot on Camp Cutlet grounds. It is the first area that we decided to make into a food plot many, many moons ago. It started out as brassicas, then we planted beans. We tried to mix corn in there one year, I think, and ultimately came back to beans. But the hardest part about this plot is that it's so close to the bedding area, it's hard to keep the browse pressure off the beans all summer long. Typically, we fence the beans off, and that works pretty well to get the beans to grow to maturity. But once we pull the fence off those beans, they only last two to three weeks tops. And to put all that hard work in for a food plot to only last two or three weeks of the season, we knew it was time to pivot. So this year, Dean and I devised a plan, and we're planting the whole field in corn. Now, this is kind of a two part two food plot system. We've got two different elevated blinds within a couple hundred yards of each other. We basically connected it linearly by corn, but they overlook two different food plots. The front field, which will be corn, and a food plot that we call grandpa's plot that will be all clover. The other thing with these two plots is they are very close to the road. That allows us to access the blinds very undetected. So as long as we can create a barrier between the food plot and the road, these fields will fill up with deer in daylight, and it is amazing how valuable they can be with how close to the road they actually are. I hate to break to you guys again, but we are moving a blind to start this process. So I hope you guys ate your Wheaties this morning. Let's get after it. We've already either moved or replaced four different blinds on the property in the last two days. And we're going for number five. And we're literally moving this one like 30 yards down to here because a couple reasons. That was kind of placed there many moons ago. And it was just kind of in the spot that we put it, I guess. But if we move it down here, we get a little bit closer to the plot. And by being on this corner, if you can imagine the deer, there you just you have a bigger surface area of the plot to kind of see and to kind of and to go after. So or to, to, to be able to shoot, especially with a bow. It opens up that back corner a little bit, opens up that back corner a little bit. With the snow, we'll be able to see up into the orchard. It's, a, it's just a great, great move. And I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna be really good. So uh, we got the tractor. We put a couple pallets on here and hopefully this thing can lift it up so we don't have to drop this thing and then move it. A little more. Because when you lift up, it's going to go, yeah, good. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to, yeah. Tilt it, tilt it, yeah. 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 It's going to work. Uh, suck it up! <laughs> it's going, baby! Oh yeah! Awesome. That's better than having a chicken today, I think. Yeah, yeah, go with it. Yep. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Holy sh... Hell yeah. That's perfect. Oh my god. Yeah, very. All right, you guys. Well, it's about 6.30, 6.45. I don't know, somewhere in there. But we're still working. We're still at it. Strategic move today on the redneck ghillie blind. Only like a 30-yard move. Strategic move. Very beneficial. 
we're gonna plant a little muscantus or corn right in front. All this is gonna be corn again, and actually all this is gonna be corn as well. So what I'm gonna do is start turning and burning the soil. Keep her moving. While we got nice weather, keep it moving. So y'all get to watch from up here. Not a bad view, not gonna lie. Not a bad freaking view. Food Plot Chronicles continues with our front field. This is what we call our front field. And last year, Dean planted all this, obviously, that I'm walking on in corn. It was the first year that we had corn coming up in this spot last year. And it provided great cover for us to get in and out of the blind and not disturb the field. Literally, right on the other side of these pine trees, about 30 yards is the road. So road blockage, road cover, minimizing pressure, not only for us to get in and out of here, but just from the road noise and pressure as well. It's extremely important. The blind was sitting literally right where I'm standing right now. So we moved it about 30 yards down. And the reason that we did that was because it actually gives you a bigger portion of the field to shoot with a bow. A lot of the deer tend to come out in that back left corner and they'll feed their way across the field and go into this little hardwoods here or they'll just kind of stick into the middle. And this gives you a better shot to the middle and also alleviates them coming out of the bedding area closer to the blind. So even if they come out in this corner, they're already at like 40 yards, whereas before, I don't know that they were as adamant to come out in the corner because of how close the blind was to the corner. It's gonna give us a better view of where the deer come out of the bedding area in the back. And I think it's just all around a better move. A little bit shorter to get around the wall and slip in here. Um, and when the corn comes up here, again, it's gonna provide blockage to get in and out of here regardless. So we're really pumped about the move of the blind i think it's going to benefit us greatly and then we are also going to change this plot from beans which it's been beans the last probably five or six years we've never planted corn out here but we are going to and the reason that we're going to do that is because last year we did everything perfect dino nailed it planting was perfect germination perfect the fence was great. The beans grew tall. They were easily waist high. But the, the browse pressure in this field is so strong that the deer literally mowed this field down before like the last week in October. We literally had like three weeks of the season and we planted a forage bean in here, I believe. It stayed green all the way into October. So that's why they were hammering it as well. But they literally wiped this field out to where there wasn't much food besides the turnips that we normally plant in the back during literally a majority of the season. So this year, we want the grain in here. We want the late season food. This, this, this plot is a little bit bigger for, the, for turnips. We have done turnips in here before and they've done good, but we want more of a late season suction because all back in this area back here it's we are so close to the bed this is the most this is the least amount of footsteps probably of any of our plots from bed to food and we want this field to be usable to be effective late season so that grain is extremely important now obviously the beans they don't stay it's if we have a fence up the deer get through it they're munching them in the summertime we lift the fence everything went perfect last year last year like i said we lift the fence and within three weeks this field is literally wiped clean other than the food in the back so planting corn in here this year hopefully is going to ensure that we have a late season food source when rifle season comes around and when the snow gets deep that blind is going to become extremely, extremely effective. We may give up a little bit of hunting 
in this specific blind earlier in the season, early October, maybe even into the you know first part of November. But what we can also do is brush hog parts of the corn in this field to kind of almost control or dictate where the deer are gonna wanna feed and gonna wanna eat. And with the corn right here, that's gonna block the road, we could literally do that really close to the blind and pull deer in within bow range in early November. And we might, we might be in far better shape than we ever were. So we're changing it up a little bit this year. I'm really excited to see how this works out with the combination of this corn and corn in here. We're gonna have probably a little over two acres of corn in this spot right here. We'll surround the whole backside with turnips. So we'll have a little bit of uh, green to grain, if you will. And this plot is surrounded by apple trees. So it is just a smorgasbord. But time, money spent, getting it right, extremely important. And that's what we're uh, on the verge of, or on the quest of doing, if you will. So I'm gonna till this up and give this one more pass through per Dino's request. And then uh, we're gonna move on to another field, but this will be all corn, all corn, turnips on the back. We also have another redneck blind over there. This is just a great, great location. I mean, it's just, we've dialed this in over the years and it's fantastic now, so. So this is the other side of the front field plot. This is what we call grandpa's. My grandpa used to have a stand in one of these trees up here surrounding these pines. And we have since put a redneck blind in. So that's grandpa's blind. It overlooks our bottom sanctuary. When Uncle Jay and Chris were in here, we were doing some trimming. We actually took out like four trees in front of the blind, make the visibility just pure, no blockage. And we uh, trimmed up this, this pine a little bit and we took a couple trees out on the edge of the dip before you go down into the woods. This is always all green, typically clover. And you could see it's kind of blotchy in here, but a majority of this is really good clover. What we'll probably do, come in and cut it, spray it with grass out and just overseed some Whitetail Institute clover into this just to keep that pure clover coming up until this is just a full green carpet. But it's gonna be bordered by the corn and this is the other end of it. You could see it's, it's actually pretty sizable. Like I said, between this and what is in the front field, we've probably got roughly two acres of corn up here. And this is an awesome, awesome spot transition area they cross the street religiously right here this corn will kind of keep them in here late season but this is a great early season spot with the green food right here the bed is super close right down in that bottom all kinds of deer beds so they'll pop right up that hill they'll come out of that cut over there and then they'll come they'll stage in this woods in here there's some apple trees in there before they come out into this clover plot also so this is one of our most utilized spots that we have um, this is our one of our most hunted spots that we have because it's good for bow season early season with the green in here it's a phenomenal rifle spot looking over that bottom especially late november near thanksgiving when them the bigger bucks are pushing those does into the bottom into the sanctuary they may pop up to eat and then late late season with this corn right here it makes it even better because bed food and you could catch them cutting across this clover in between it's a spot that we have to have right it's a spot that we've put a lot of time and effort into over the years and we just put a lot of time and effort into it over this last week and it was the first year ever that we had corn here last year and it was amazing because once again it blocks the road it provides food and it just holds deer in this area so got this corn tilled up again this is ready to roll this will be dino approved look at this dirt that dirt is pure it's fluffy it's broken up real real nice it's relatively flat as you can see from here it's relatively flat so that cedar is going to just it's going to take less effort to dig them trenches for the seed and the seed's going to drop in there and cover much easier 
with that, uh, what is it, the pasture pleaser that Dean normally gets, that he seeds the beans and the corn with. So, pumped up. This is good to be done. We've got one more big field to hit, but this is the front ghillie and grandpa's plot right before we start turning, or it's right before we lime and plant. So, these, this drill is uh, plants eight inch rows. So if I block off two in the middle, we will have 24 inch rows of corn. Which uh, I think is perfect for a food plot. You can go smaller than that. Like I said, it was it was fine when we did it. It's the deer ate it. We just didn't get super big ears because it was a little crowded out. I think. So I think this will be really nice. And you know the side by side's got a you know somewhere between like a 46 and 48 inch wheelbase. So if my rows are 46, 48 inches apart, it'll be 48 inches apart every two rows so you can go right you know just to the right of them and you'll be in between all the rows to spray so it's going to make spraying a hell of a lot easier too i just measured all that up to make sure we were good with that and which we are spraying corn is a little stressful if you don't have a well i should say without a corn planter because it's usually you're running over a lot of it which doesn't really hurt you but every time i do i feel like i'm running over corn i feel like i'm running over humans i'm like no no Check seed. Whew. I got the drone in the air. I am a one-man show. Officially a one-man show. I'm officially a one-man show. What else do you want me to do? You want me to juggle? I'll juggle. Is that what you want? You want me to juggle? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? We're making the stripes, baby. The stripes. Food Plot Chronicles, y'all. This is our most important food plot system on the entire property. Mainly because it's our easiest to access and we spend the most time here. So we want it to be right. There's a road that runs right behind me here. So both of our blinds are set up only about 60 to 80 yards off the road. That's strictly for access purposes. Allows us to get in and out of here really, really easily. We put corn in a huge row, basically from one blind to the other. So we can stay behind it when we're getting in and out. It provides cover, screenage from the road, and also late season food for the deer. It's just gonna hold deer in here a lot longer. And then the main part of the field, we always have planted in soybeans, always. And it's been like beating a dead horse. The deer just absolutely demolish it. If you don't fence it, there's nothing there. If you do fence it, as soon as you take the fence off, it's gone within two weeks. This field's just surrounded by a bedding area. So the deer bop in and out of this field all day long and soybeans is great and attractive as they are clearly we just don't get enough hunting time out of it to make it worth the investment so we put corn in this year and it's looking awesome it's already four to four to five feet tall it's going to be a little bit more challenging to bow hunt out of that stand because of it but we are spraying and putting in turnips and clover around the edge of this whole field so we're giving the deer everything they got everything they want i should say corn we're gonna have some turnips some clover and then as this corn moves down to that other blind there's a there's about three quarters of an acre of an awesome clover plot 
Imperial Clover from Whitetail Institute. It's looking awesome. The bucks are already in there a bunch. And that field, we've tried to put turnips in there a few times and the soil, the seed just doesn't like that soil for some reason. So you gotta listen to what you plant. If things don't work after a couple years, turnips are finicky sometimes. So if they don't like it, try something else. We put clover in there and it's taken really, really well. And we've given the deer a huge variety with all these different food sources and a bunch of different cover with the corn. And uh, hopefully this is gonna be dynamite during deer season. The deer always leave this area late season on our property. It's always because we don't have a lot of late season food here and we changed that this year. So we're hoping in gun season, we can utilize these blinds and we're stacking up some deer. So this is an awesome food plot system. I can't wait to hunt it in October. When you look at these fields from a bird's eye view, it's a thing of beauty. We shouldn't call it the front field, we should call it the field of dreams. Pretty much what dreams are made of. Now I know I joked around about Dino in last week's episode, all fun and games, but this week we are gonna give him his flowers. The dude is a food plot wizard. And it's taken a long time and a lot of research and development and a lot of screwing things up and pivoting to try and do things different. But Dean's got these plots dialed in. You can see that by how good the corn looks already this year. And it's all thanks to Dino and how well that kid can grow some corn. I mean, there's bushels and bushels in there. I tell you, we're going to have corn till February, March. Man, I don't even know what to say. Kind of wish he was here right now. I'd give him a hug. These two spots are some of our most hunted on our property. And a lot of that has to do with the access in and out and how easy it is. With how much we utilize both of these spots, they have to be perfect. Thank you guys once again for coming along on our journey of Food Plot Chronicles. We hope you enjoyed this episode on the front field and Grandpa's plot. Next week, we are heading to another far corner of our property to a plot that we call the Ponderosa. This is where Nipsey and Bernie and the Godfather were all she lacked. Some of the biggest bucks that we've taken off of our property were taken right there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh, and if you want to listen to our podcast, subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you take in your podcasts. We can't thank you enough for following along once again, and we will see you right back here next week for another episode of Food Clock Chronicles. Man, I can't believe Dean goes home like that. I'll tell you, the first couple of years, I thought he was just getting lucky. Kid knows what he's doing. I mean, I've never seen so many deer feeding one field before. It's like he sprinkles something in that corn seed. I don't know what he does. I'm sure glad we drafted him second round 1989 draft. I'll tell you that much.